wife needs this surgery. We're not the bad guys. We're just the guys trying to get home. I got to get back to my wife and my son, no matter what. I'm going to get you back home, little brother. Ambulance. I'm going to get everybody home. Needing money to cover his wife's medical bills, a decorated veteran teams up with his adoptive brother to steal $32 million from a Los Angeles bank. However, when their getaway goes wrong, the desperate thieves hijack an ambulance that's carrying a severely wounded cop and an EMT worker. Caught in a high-speed chase, the two siblings must figure out a way to outrun the law while keeping their hostages alive. Michael Bay has returned to the big screen with a thrilling, intense bank heist movie starring Jake Gyllenhaal, Yahya Abdul-Mateen, and Isa Gonzalez. Will, played by Yahya Abdul, approaches, approaches Danny, played by Jake Gyllenhaal, for a possible loan, and Danny hits him back with a, I got a job for you. <laughs> and he tells him, this will be easy, bro. It's in and out. Nobody will get hurt. I promise this will be as easy as possible and quick. You'll get the money that you need and you'll be on your way. I'm your brother, bro. I've been your brother all your life. You could trust me. And of course, it's not so easy. While trying to escape with what they can, the cop gets wounded. Here comes an ambulance. Uh, the two take hostage. The ambulance, the EMT, and the, the wounded cop. And on goes the rest of the movie with the high-speed, intense chase. Of course, in the ambulance, of course. Look, this movie is fun, it's definitely a ride, but this is a lot of energy taken out of you to get through this movie. It's over two hours long by 16 minutes. Michael Bay takes this ambulance high-speed chase with the cops over the top, as he would. When it comes to the characters, Will and Danny, they let you know immediately that Danny is just bad because he's bad. And Will is the vet that's trying to get his sick wife taken care of, trying to take care of their children or the, his, their child. And the world is seeming, seemingly against Will when it comes to like insurance and medical bills and how to get his wife into the surgeries that she needs. And with that said, they make it hard to connect with either of the characters, especially when I want to root for Will as much as possible. But just with some of the actions that take place with the character, it's just hard to do that. It was hard to connect with him on for most of the movie. I will say, however, the character Will did bring me back around when it, when it comes to how I feel about his character by the end of the movie. Let's say even to forgive him, if you will. But it takes a long time to get there and it's doesn't really matter anymore by the time that I do even care anymore. It just it's too long for feels too long by that point to even care anymore. But it kinda it kinda happened by the end, I'll say that. And for Danny, well again, he's just bad because he's bad and it's all he's ever known is that lifestyle basically. And the movie does not try this movie does not try to get you to care about the character Danny. They don't try to give his character a character arc or even will for that fact, for that matter. But the character Cam, play, played by Isa Gonzalez, she has a pretty good arc. Pretty good A to B. Nothing in the middle. I'll say that. Like, I, we, we grasping on straws right here, bro. We grasping on straws. She has an A moment and a B moment. And there's... There's very, there's probably a sprinkle, like a little bit, just like a, like a dash, like a little bit of salt in the middle, or you could say there was a little bit of story there for her arc, but she got A to B and a, a little bit in the middle to connect it. And that's it. But she has a good emotional scene towards the end. So <laughs> that's where, that's where I had the most for me when it came to caring about a character or having any emotion in this movie was with that one character, Cam. Again, played by Isa Gonzalez. When it comes to the action, of course, Michael Bray, you, you bringing it, you bringing it. We have a nice sequence at the bank in the beginning of the film. Nice sequence, a lot of gunfire going on. Uh, you know, cops versus bad guys, bad guys versus cops. But after that, it's 
It's literally our cast sitting in a car or an ambulance chasing each other for the rest of the movie. And I don't know how you feel about that, but after a while, it just starts to get stale. You just have characters that are just chasing each other in an ambulance. You feel like the cops could catch up to this ambulance at any time if they so choose. There's helicopters, there's freaking uh, SWAT, SWAT trucks or whatever, SWAT cars, fucking boats and... The news is that they're tracking them. They got they're showing you the, the military per, precision, how they have like trackers on the on the helicopters and how easily they're being followed. It's it's endless. Just dozens and dozens of cop cars at every corner. They're just snipers, like <laughs> but they're getting away in an ambulance. I guess the name of the movie. With that being said, when it comes to the way this movie was cut and even directed. Edited, cut, directed, however you want to put it. Michael Bay goes wild with the way he cut this film, bro. This film has some of the most angle-to-angle -angle cuts I've ever seen in a movie, I think. I've, I think one of the Resident Evil movies did it to me. But this movie was insane with the way he would cut from an angle to an angle to an angle. He would give you a low shot to the close-up to the face, high uh, over the head shot, uh, side shot, drone shot would come in, swoop through the screen. It was, it was getting absolutely insane. It was get, making my head hurt very much. And I understand, Michael, that you, that you have these big scenes with explosions, cars flipping, uh, high-speed chases, and you want to stick as many cameras on those sequences as you can. I get it. But instead of using every single one of those 10 cameras or more, you should pull it back a little bit. You should use like two angles or even just one angle on a lot of those scenes so we can really see the scene play out as smoothly as possible as the audience member. A guy reloading his weapon should not have seven different camera angles on it in a four second shot. It's absolutely insane. It is absolutely insane. A car driving through a fruit, uh, fruit stand with fruits in it and the fruits go in the air in slow motion should not have six different camera angles within those three seconds that this hot, this freaking fast car is crashing through this uh, uh, fruit cart, whatever those things are called. There, there should be no reason you're doing this, but he does this throughout the entire movie, the entire movie. But I did like some of those drone shots because yet I don't know who was flying those drones. It wasn't, there wasn't always helicopters. These were some drone shots coming in through tight, tight, uh, tight angles. Like coming, there was some cool shots with the drones, and they would fly, swoop in, and do a lot of cool curves and turns. But again, it's being ruined by the cuts in between. Just took a lot of the cinematic value out of it for me. To be honest, all in all. This was an over-the-top bank heist, car chase movie with a wasted potential. Good actors with less than, with less to work with than deserved. My grade is a D plus. My grade for this movie is a D plus. There's very little in it to bring to bring a, even a grade up from the D plus. The, the D plus was just that that a uh, couple of moments with the the character cam. Uh, the, the bank heist was kind of fun, to be honest. There's some good comedy in here. A lot of cheesy jokes that take you out of the moment. Like, there's the, there, it's an inten intense, intense speed chase on, like, the highway or just the streets of L.A. Intense. They could die at any moment, essentially. The hostages could die at any moment. A lot of crazy shit could happen at any moment. And they're just cracking jokes out for no reason. Listening to, to uh, Apple AirPods... In the middle of a car chase, just they're just jamming out to music. A lot of abrupt, unnecessary jokes. A lot of abrupt scenes uh, within this movie. Just it just didn't work. It didn't work for me. Let me know what y'all thought in the comments down below. See this movie however you want. Go see it in theaters. See it online when it comes out. Do what you want to do with your life and your money. But you heard what I had to say. So again, hit that like, comment, and subscribe button. And I'll see you on the next one. I'm just a guy with a camera and a mic and a mount.
I don't see nothing wrong. I don't see nothing wrong. Just a little subscribe. Subscribe is my I don't see nothing wrong. Go ahead and hit that like button. Oh, you know I like that. Oh, now you better hit subscribe. Oh, bitch, you gonna die.